For RCR Wireless News, my name is Sean Kinney, and I'm here with Michael Granavis of Ericsson to learn a little bit more about this update to the transport portfolio. So before we dig into it, Michael, tell me a little bit about what needs to change. You know, backhaul, aggregation routers, these have been around for a while. So what's prompted this refresh? No, good point. I mean, essentially what's happening is that as we try to squeeze basically more capacity out of the available spectrum, which is very scarce, we came up with a lot of different uh, radio architectures. So we don't only have the traditional distributed RAN, we have the basement at every cell site. We now also have centralized RAN, we're putting the basement basically in a CRAN hub. We're introducing elastic RAN, uh, we're introducing even virtual RAN. The bottom line is that, and especially with 5G, is that all these different architectures will have different protocols. And different interfaces and all those protocols interfaces essentially also have different requirements regarding capacity and latency. So uh, the bottom line is that the transport network of the past is not going to be the transport network of the future and you don't want to basically use your legacy routers to fulfill the promise of 5G. That, that's I think that's the biggest change we see in the industry now. So Michael, you mentioned CRAN a few times right. there and some of the benefits that an operator can realize exactly. by pooling their radio uh, equipment and then feeding remote right. sites. To do that, you need front haul. So uh, just like the routers, what makes a front haul appliance a 5G front haul appliance? Exactly, yeah, uh, very good point. So um, first of all, um, the speeds are gonna be increasing, right? So we started in the past with traditional LTE Cypri option three, so 2.5 gig, then five gig, and then a 9.8. Now we have Cypri option eight. So that is one piece. Uh, but then you also see the number of channels just to be able to support the sheer right capacity, right? It's increasing quite a lot. Uh, what we are doing is uh, basically uh, different solutions for different applications. And the reason is that the requirements, it will vary. Uh, for example, if you have um, a street light, small cells, we're gonna need a lot of them, right, with millimeter wave, is that um, the real estate is extremely important. It can take six to nine months to file for a permit. And I can tell you, in you know, my neighborhood, no one wants an ugly site, right, in front of the home. So that means that you have to come up with solutions which are tightly integrated in our radios. So one of the things we're doing is that we're integrating our frontal solution behind our millimeter wave radios. It basically means that for the cares, faster rollouts, uh, cheaper rollouts, because you know, it's easy to get a permit, plus you don't have to pay at least for another ugly box below. Right, so that is one thing. Uh, another thing is that uh, on the macros, right, then you're not talking about just millimeter wave, you have your, your existing LT, everything needs to come together means that you need a very high density. So what we have here, this is our latest high density frontal 6622. Single rack unit uh, uh, high. Total of 18 transponders, right? So I take basically 18 gray radios in, convert them to 18 uh, colored uh, radios out uh, in a single rack unit. So this is roughly a factor, what's it? Uh, six to nine times higher density what we have now. And then we can connect this to a passive filter. Well, and, and, and here's why. In the case of frontal, the lease of a fiber, right, is roughly, let's say, $1,000 a month, so let's say $12,000 a year. So you want to make sure that, you know, as you're rolling out, right, more radios, you want to make sure you do it in a very economical way. So we have designed our frontal filters in such a way that I can do a total of 24 radios and put them in a single fiber strand. So if I have a fiber pair, I can do up to 48, right? And the other piece I was mentioning is that um, the protocols are also changing, right? So we started with a CIPRI protocol, and now there's a new protocol called the eCIPRI Enhanced CIPRI, which is a packet-based interface. Um, so besides having different rates, you're also going to have different protocols. 
But it also means that the frontal system, the transponders, they have to be basically product agnostic. Uh, they should be also vendor agnostic because, you know, I wish everybody's using our products, but of course the reality is that you are living in a multi-vendor environment and it has to be simple and also multi-rate, right? So that is basically, I would say, you know, some of the key things, highest density, protocol agnostic, vendor agnostic, right, and multi-rate. And then all managed by the same management system. So that is, I would say, the optical frontal. And to top it off, sometimes you don't have a fiber for that last radio, right? You cannot just reach it. So we have developed also our basically microwave frontal system. So that's the frontal 6392. Essentially, that gives you uh, a 10 gig, so Cypri option seven over a two kilometer uh, kind of reach. So that allows you, you know, to be able to connect those last radios and then you have everything together. Michael, I really appreciate you taking the time to dig Thank into you. the specifics of your router and front hall upgrades. Thank you, Sean. Thank you.